one of my biggest goals for this year is to finally work on a website redesign for 10k designers. For the last three to four years, ever since we got started, the website has been a very important part of the community, helping members grow, connect and get discovered. But of course, a lot has changed since then. And as we evolved, so did our needs. A couple months ago, we officially got started on this. And our talented team, a blend of in-house designers and external freelancers took on this ambitious project with a simple guiding brief. What does the design school of the internet look like? How do we keep that classic 10K designers brand that people know us for while also setting us up for the next phase of the company and the community? So join me as we dive deep into this project. Let's jump here, okay? First up, the most useful thing that I think a lot of people don't know yet is you now have AI options within FigJam. Instead of, I think most people when they come to GPT-4, the thing that they do is they say, hey, I am designing a website, can you give me the copy? Right, like they're very direct with ChatGPT where they just say what they want, which is fine. But imagine working with a teammate, like maybe a freelancer that you've hired and you just ask them, hey, uh, do this. That doesn't really work. In design, you have to set context a lot of times. You might know what you want up here, but nobody can read that. And at the same time, how are you gonna communicate it, right? It's a big problem. The way I'm, I think about GPT-4 is I try to have conversations. Back then though, I was trying deeper with this. What I'm trying to figure out is I'm not really trying to get an immediate answer. I'm trying to help ChatGPT understand the context first. So it took what I did, put it down in a much cleaner way, right? What are the decision making stages? This is a lot of deep UX brainstorming, I would say. So I am now slowly giving all this information. The gap with AI is it gives you a lot, which, you know, those of you who've been through the cohort, you might recognize that as divergent. AI can push you like this. It diverges your thoughts, right? It gives you more to think about, but that's not always useful. Sometimes you want less to think about. You want to say, no, I'm not going to do all this, but I'm going to do this. That's the difficult part. So what we did, we extracted some ideas here. Now, not this is not the first thing that we started with, but it was one of the first few things, right? The first thing I actually started with was figuring out what the goals of the website were. One of the things we directly asked was, hey, okay, I have a sitemap and I'm ready to start developing the content and design for these web pages. This is what it is. And it does give it all out for you, but you still need to figure out a lot of stuff, right? This For somebody who's a beginner, I think this is very, very useful. To me, this was not so useful. If you here, you're listening to this and you consider yourself, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still a bit of a beginner. I would say this is very, very useful to you. Super useful. Like to be able to have this much stuff to think about and this much stuff guiding the direction of your project, very useful. The other interesting thing is your team can do this. So me as the client, I already had a lot of this context. But if I had to actually type this out as a PRD or as a document to share with my designers, it would have taken me a lot of time to do it. But now I can just share the chat GPD URL and say, hey, check this out. This was my first round of brainstorming. One thing that we realized was as the, you know, our positioning being the design school of the future, it does feel like now compared to when we started this, we're already living in the future, right? So an updated tagline that we came up with was the design school of the internet. Given that I am here in Copenhagen, Janil, who's my co-host, Janil and I do every single live session together for each cohort. Janil is based in the US. 
Our mentors are based in India. Members, most of them in India, but everywhere. A tighter positioning, right? Now, I'm talking about a few brand design parts of this. From a positioning perspective, it was design school of the internet. But from a visual, what does that design school of the internet mean? Very specifically, what we found was our website, we had this cool, this purple, pink, gradient aesthetic going on, right? This is a kind of popular aesthetic back in the day, uh, even now to some extent. But here's, let me show you a little bit of the behind the scenes, okay? The vibe that we wanted to go for was number one, that of a design school. So we took, in our inspiration, this is our mood board, we looked a lot into some of these education keynotes. So iPad, Apple Notes, even FigJam, for example, uh, the vibe that they have here. We looked at a bunch of landing pages, Apple landing pages for education. Um, and the reason we really loved this particular vibe was it is a juxtaposition. On one side, you've got this, you've got this, which is like the space, pink, purple, gradient, heavy 3D, lot of detail, virtual, right? Completely virtual spaces, virtual uh, textures. On the other hand, you some have something which is human. You've got organic. You've got, it's messy and that's not a problem. It's a work in progress. This was the vibe we're going for, okay? Here, we've got a lot of Figma elements. These are Figma stickies. These are some sketch notes. So we did take inspiration from sketch notes and collages. But overall, the value here for you, if you are somebody who's working on a website, visual design usually involves something like this, right? My suggestion to all of you here, from a very practical perspective, is whenever you're doing a website, it's useful to create these kind of mood boards or what do you roughly want it to be like? Also, what we also did was we did some uh, ideas here. So for each of these, we also were like, hey, these are some interesting things that might look good. Now, we didn't end up going with or copying or, you know, being too close to any of these, but this was inspiration, right? This is inspiration for visual design. Okay. Personally, what I like to do is I like as much as possible to know what I'm designing before I start designing. Now, let me make let me make that very clear. It's an important point. I do not open Figma till I know what I'm going to be doing in Figma, right? Now, it's not a rule that you have to do this, right? I'm not going to give you this as a suggestion. But in my experience, I have just found it's useful to know what you're doing before you jump into Figma, right? Looking at a blank screen in Figma and figuring it out. Yeah, I've done plenty of that, right? And sometimes that works. But for me, I like figuring stuff out before getting into visuals. So this is what I've done here. So overall, if you look at my process, the way I do things, now I'm not saying you need to do it this way, but if you find yourself stuck, you can take some inspiration from here. The way I like to do things is I like to progressively build upon, right? So wireframes here, this was maybe one of my first couple of wireframes for this project. That was good. The wireframes before this, I hadn't figured out a lot of this core stuff. So I, you know, how can you do a wireframe when you don't know the information? That's the core thing. Your wireframes will be as good as the information you put in the wireframes, which means you actually have to figure out the information first, which is why we had all this time, you know, going through this and everything, which is to us, like normally you would use research as this information gathering thing. For us, research is not a specific thing we do. It's a continuous process. We're going to jump into some visuals now. This was our rough style. So what we did, we did a quick audit where we put together, check this out, guys. We put together every UI element on the page in one single Figma. A very core thing we wanted to show was presence. A big part of the cam any campus experience or campus-like experience is the people, right? So we're using different ways of doing that, right? We're trying these kinds of elements. So it kind of feels like Figma. Uh, we tried these kind of elements, which is more Figma, slightly modified used with different types of uh, cursors. But anyway, all this was exploration, right? In the end, when it came down to it, this wireframe is what helped us kind of move forward. This same wireframe, but just in light mode. Uh, one of the reasons I, c I like doing this is I also like to try to think about what are the core CTAs on my website, like core call to actions. A website, unlike a magazine, a magazine, the only interaction you do with it is read. Websites are not like magazines. Websites are supposed to be interactable. They're supposed to be navigable. You're supposed to navigate and read more about it. You want to think of them as 
it's a collection of these pages. There are navigation flows between these pages, but you want to be intentional about where do I send people? Where do I want people to go visit? And you know, in a very simple way, that's just navigation. So think about navigation when you're designing. So there are just four sections here, cohorts, content, community, companies. For each, we thought about what's the call to action. For cohorts, it was learn more. It takes you to the cohort page. Content, start learning. Community, you know, browse, learn more. For companies, hire from us, you know, download placement report. These are some things that are still in progress. So guys, that was our wireframe. Uh, from this, this was our first version that we created. Now you might be thinking, what, how did all this come together? This is how it came together. We already had all our UI elements. We wanted to figure out the next version of these. So staying similar, but making a few stylistic upgrades, right? That was our simple way to decide. So these are some of our visual explorations. Some of this stuff, it's still not even live on the site. Some of this will probably come in future updates. So we're thinking, so from the wireframes, if you remember, we've got a section for cohort, a section for community. We want to, we want to have a homepage for each of these. So slash cohort, slash community, slash content, slash companies. We've not done that yet, but this is our community section where we want to create more of this kind of custom artwork. All right, let's come here. This is when shit got real. This is when we realized that the cohort is launching in the next two weeks and the website is still not ready. That was a problem that we ran into. And I'll be honest, guys, I have no reason to hide. In general, we did all this, but we lost track. Like we did so much good work, so much exploration, but nothing was moving to Webflow, which means handoff was not happening, right? So we found ourselves in a slightly uncomfortable position where we had a lot of stuff. We had all these iterations, but we're like decisions to be made, right? Like just, oh, should we do this or this? Like most of these decisions were because if you want to do everything that you've designed in general, if you've designed something and you want to develop 100% of it, it requires a lot of effort, right? So usually when you come towards this handoff stage, you have to start making difficult decisions, right? You might have gone divergent and explored a ton of stuff, but at some point, you got to pull yourself back and you got to go convergent where you need to say, this is it. We are getting this out. We've made the final decision, right? That's a very difficult process. And that's when I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do the web flow myself. And so over the course of two days, not two continuous days, I think I took a gap of two, three days in between, but I started making this in web flow. And for that one by one, I started putting the sections and making final decisions. So final decisions. So we started putting this together section by section, finalizing things. This was to me one of the hardest parts because it involved so much copywriting. Now you might think copywriting, hey, didn't we do all that chat GPT stuff over there? Here's the thing guys, when you're creating a website and you wanna think about the copy on your website, you can't just say whatever the fuck you want. You have to be on a message. You have to be on a mission. You have to be on goal. The goal with this is to introduce this thing that's been running for three and a half years called 10K Designers that now has a thousand alumni members and has its new cohort coming up. We have to be the source of truth for that. So this was the hardest part, according to me. Of course, the Webflow, but it was not just the Webflow that I was doing. I was actually section by section finalizing stuff. So it's decisions like that, right? And there's tons of these. There's like hundreds of these kinds of small decisions that you make. But each decision adds up one single decision made wrong will not fuck up your entire design, right? So one thing I want to just tell you all is don't be afraid in making these decisions. Go with your gut, go with your intuition, go with your conversations, right? Talk to people, get their perspective. But in the end, pull the trigger. There's too many decisions like this. And yeah, it's not easy. You have to just go through it. How do you make decisions? Put your options out there, compare. So guys, overall, that is my redesign right here. The reason I showed you that, right, is the final point that I want to end on is a lot of us are designing good stuff. Fewer of us, though, are taking the effort to showcase and even fewer people are taking the effort of fully showcasing and marketing your work. Guys, in 2023 and going into 2024, the designer has a dual function of being a designer, but also a marketer. Because of course, there is the marketing skill needed for things like copywriting, figuring out these landing pages, figuring out how do you be user centered? How do you think about your personas? How do you think about what 
they are looking for how do you use terms that they want there's all that stuff but as a designer today it's very important to post your stuff it's very important to figure out how do you create good presentations of your stuff because you might have this entire figma file but it took me right now about 2 hours to take you all through this figma file just think about that for a sec all of you here think to your one of your top projects right just think about that for a sec it's in your mind right now your top project that you worked on it's probably a massive figma file like this that you're very proud of but actually having somebody else go through it is a very long and tedious process so constantly as a designer you need to be thinking about how do i get my work out from figma and figjam onto the internet that of course comes in the form of shipping which is a design is not done till a person on the other end is actually using it so that's that's one part of it but the other part of it is if you've done your design it needs to be out there on the internet for people to find for people to discover my suggestions to all of you let's just keep it simple promote your work how much ever you think you're promoting your work right now you could be promoting it a little bit more let me just say that and this kind of shit is what gets you clients it's what gets you discovered it's what helps you break from the matrix that you found yourself trapped in